Hey, little guy. I think that's my seat. You're in the wrong place. Let's take care of you. There. You can sit back and relax and watch the concert. Well, good evening, folks. And welcome to the Ragtime Christmas Show. Uh, I've been looking forward to this all week, and I hope that you all get a kick out of it. I'm sure I will. It's not going to be strictly a Christmas music, of course. I, I know quite a bit of it, but not enough to fill a whole concert, you know? I like to run these virtual concerts as if, uh, as if I was playing for a real audience, you know, and would do an hour-long concert with an intermission and then another 45 minutes or so. Uh, looks like I need to move the camera just a bit. Hold on. Okay, not too bad. <laughs> I'm gonna start out with a piece of music that is very well known. It's one of those melodies that you often hear at Christmas time, but uh, maybe you don't know the real name of it. So here's a little bit of old fashioned American operetta, Toyland by Victor Herbert. Babes in Toyland by Victor Herbert, who really wrote a lot of beautiful melodies. In fact, he's been kind of forgotten by many people. American operetta used to be very, very popular. And uh, the march from Babes in Toyland is also another very famous uh, piece of music that's played at Christmas time. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Ragtime Christmas Show. And I'm going to play some uh, real ragtime for you tonight as well. And I was saying earlier, I probably don't know enough Christmas songs to last the whole two hours or so that I usually play. So if you could come up with some requests for me, I'd also really appreciate that. As usual, these shows are just to make you all happy. That's really the whole point of what I do, as far as I can tell. And, um, of course, I like to share a lot of the music that I love as well. And uh, while we're at it, if you think uh, some of your friends would enjoy this kind of music, please share the live video feed 
on both YouTube and Facebook. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to play an authentic ragtime piece for you next, which uh, is a very early one, actually, from 1899, and it was written in Nashville by a blind piano tuner named Charles Hunter. And I had a special request for this uh, from my friend Joe Sell, who's an artist that lives in Arizona. And uh, uh, anyway, tickled to death, this goes out to Joe. it somewhere else. <laughs> oh well. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. That's Tickled to Death by Charles Hunter. I saw a couple of requests go by while I was playing. It's a little hard to, to play and, uh, and take those requests at the same time, but uh, anyhow, uh, I may not know too many of them, really. I'm, I'm certainly planning to play just about every Christmas song that I know tonight. But that still will not take up the, uh, the full concert, but uh, um, I typically uh, read the comments and requests on Facebook. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to read them on YouTube at the same time, although I might uh, hop up to the computer uh, once or twice in the middle of the show to try and, and look at YouTube as well if you have some requests. So start them coming in, please. I'm, I'm uh, planning to try and... I don't know, just play things that'll make all of you happy tonight. And, um, well, in the meantime, <laughs> I thought of a really appropriate piece for tonight because I did want to play some real ragtime. Hey, okay, Rodney wants to hear Pineapple Rag. We'll do that tonight. I was just uh, about to discuss classic rags. And here's one by Joseph Flam. This is the original copy of it. Reindeer Rag. I thought it was great for tonight. From 1915. And this copy belonged to the famous ragtime Bob Darch, of course. You can see his stamp on it, which says Virginia City, Nevada. He must have lived there for a while. Reindeer Rag by Joseph Flam. The first time I've ever played it. <laughs>
your rag, something like that. <laughs> I saw a comment from Michael there saying that uh, I turn pages in the sheet music very carefully. Well, that's because what I actually do here at home is uh, I use the original copies of the sheet music, which you know, some of these things are worth a fair bit of money and I don't want to accidentally tear them. I prefer using these old copies, the originals, because it's a lot bigger than they print music now. It's easier to see it. Not only that, they have these wonderful old covers. And uh, I have so much music in my collection that there's really not room for a Xerox copy of every piece of music that I want to play. So just organizing the originals and making space for that is uh, about as much as I can manage to do. <laughs> James Duncan asks for Delmar Rag. Oh my goodness, what an interesting request. Uh, that's uh, by the St. Louis Ragtime Pianist Charlie Thompson. I'll, I'll play that for you. I can still do it. Uh, I had a request for Pineapple Rag first, though, so let me get to that. everybody. John Lanise. 
Are you related to Mary Grace and Jerry? Let me know. And Meadowlark Rag, that's a favorite of mine. I, I would not have thought of playing that tonight, but I can certainly do it. Yeah, there's Pineapple Rag, and uh, um, I, I saw your, your request for Silent Night, Dave. I can play it. I could probably play it by ear, but uh, I want to stick to real popular music instead of like uh, religious hymns and so forth. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Jerry. You know, I don't think I knew your real name was John. Well, anyway, I'll do Meadowlark for you. In fact, maybe I'll do that next. Uh, and then we'll get to some Christmas songs before too long. I promise you that. Thanks, everybody.
uh, someone asked who wrote that. It was written by a pianist from San Francisco named Thomas Pitts. And he really didn't write much other music. Uh, that came out in 1916. And in the uh, early 20s, uh, he wrote one hit for Paul Whiteman. It was called I Never Knew. And that's, that's about all he's known for. Um, Johnny Maddox told me that in the 1950s, when he was playing in San Francisco, he worked with an old-time drummer who had actually known Thomas Pitts and said that he was a horrible drug addict. Just incredible to me what beautiful music he wrote, though. There's no doubt about that. Of course I can play something in the style of Big Tiny Little uh, there. Uh, Bernie, uh, his, his style was very much the 1950s sort of honky-tonk piano style, and I learned a lot of that from Johnny Maddox, who was one of the performers of that 1950s era, kind of like Del Wood, too, for, for example. I know you love Down Yonder. Uh, no, who? No, wait, wait a minute. No, that's not Bernie. Sorry. I saw Ken was, uh, was uh, t sending a message there from Australia. Uh, Lowell asked for Santa Baby. I, I don't play that song. You know, some of these pop songs are a lot better if you sing them. And I certainly cannot sing like Eartha Kitt, although uh, I, I'm very interested in that song. I, th I think it's a unique phenomenon. The man that wrote Santa Baby in 1953 is still living, Philip Springer. And I wrote to him almost a year ago now, and he autographed the original sheet music for that song for me from 1953. <laughs> No, I was afraid this was going to happen. I'm getting a lot of requests, and Nancy, I'm afraid I don't know Sleigh Ride either. I, I know some Christmas music, but, you know, not a whole whole bunch of it. There'll be quite a few that I don't know. Uh, but in the meantime, let's see. Let's, let's do a couple of Christmas songs, ones that I do know. And I wanted to start with both of these. These are from the early 1930s. And uh, 1934, to be exact, I think they're both written the same year. And I just sort of play them in my own style, you know. The, the first one that I'll play is a, is a very famous melody called Winter Wonderland. And that was actually written for the Ziegfeld Follies, one of the few productions of that show that continued after Flo Ziegfeld died. Uh, his wife, Billy Burke, continued to produce the shows on Broadway for a few years. Uh, if you don't know who Billy Burke was, she was the Good Witch Glenda in The Wizard of Oz, a very famous actress. But, so we'll do Winter Wonderland, and then from the same year, a very famous song called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And I also have a unique uh, connection with that song, which was written in part by the great J. Fred Coops, who was a really wonderful songwriter. He's also particularly known for Love Letters in the Sand. Maybe I'll play that after this. And uh, J. Fred Coots, Coots is the great uncle of Danny Coots, the famous Nashville drummer. Uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with many times. And um, uh, Coots wrote the m music for the song and the melody, uh, the lyrics rather, of Santa Claus is Coming to Town were written by Haven Gillespie, another great old 20s and 30s songwriter. Uh, and... Uh, my friend Johnny Maddox knew him personally, had lunch with him. It was either in Nashville or his hometown in Gallatin, Tennessee, he told me about that. So uh, here's a little medley of a couple of the Christmas hits of the early 30s. Winter Wonderland and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And Santa Claus is Coming to Town was recorded by a lot of the famous artists, but it really became most popular after Rudy Valley sang it on his radio. So Rudy Valley, man, can't think straight tonight. <laughs> Eddie Cantor sang it on his radio show. It was November 1934. I looked this up yesterday. Uh, Eddie Cantor is the one who really made Santa Claus is Coming to Town into a hit. Anyway, here we go.
folks. All right, I was just trying to read some of the other comments and requests there on the computer. Uh, Dave, no, it's, it's not that I'm uh, against playing a religious song, Silent Night is not necessarily that religious, it's that it's the, really the wrong style of music. It's just only about three chords, and it's um, not real popular music. That's an Austrian melody from over 200 years ago before there really was such a thing as popular music. Um, I love the piece, it's beautiful. Actually, I, I'm very, very fond of that song. Um, I saw someone requested uh, something from the movie Sun Valley Serenade, uh, yeah, I guess that's a wintry movie. It's not a half bad idea. I think Chattanooga Choo Choo was written for that movie. Uh, that's one of Glenn Miller's two famous movies that he made before he was lost in World War II. But uh, I might do that in a second. For the, for the moment, uh, there was another request that went by there. Oh no, I was talking about J. Fred Coots. That's what I was going to do. I was going to play Love Letters in the Sand. Uh, that was one of his biggest hits outside of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This was written a couple years earlier, 1931. So let me do that for you. And uh, I play it complete with the verse and also another song that uh, J. Fred Coots composed with uh, the legendary songwriter Glenn Rowell. And I don't know if the song was ever published, but uh, I got the manuscript from Johnny. It's called In the Doorway Where We Used to Kiss Goodnight. And so here are two more J. Fred Coots songs. Love Letters in the Sand and in the Doorway where we used to kiss goodnight, which he wrote with Glenn Rowell.
in the sand. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, Dwayne, uh, Pat Boone had a very big hit with that. In fact, a number of different musicians revived that on Dot Records in the 1950s. And uh, one of them was Johnny Maddox. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he kind of started all that. And there was Pat Boone and then also Mac Wiseman, who was a country singer that was on Dot Records. And they all made recordings of that song in the mid to late 1950s. Uh, let's see, I saw a couple other comments go by there. Requests. Oh, uh, Damien made a comment that this was the golden era of stride. Well, no, what I'm playing is not really stride piano. This is just popular music, pop songs of the 1920s and 30s. A stride piano is much more um, related to jazz piano. And uh, anyhow, that's, that's a common uh, thing. I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day, which is that... Uh, people who are or not really familiar with that era, they will often even call the ragtime era music the stride left hand, which is, which is not correct either. It's very different. The ragtime uh, style is very different than the left hand you find in stride piano, but uh, it was certainly the golden era of American popular music uh, of all kinds, of all kinds. And uh, let's see... Oh, someone requested a little music from Sun Valley Serenade. So let's do, let's do uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo. How would that sound? And when I play it, I always do a chorus of, on the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe as well.
Chattanooga Choo Choo. Thank you, folks. Um, I'm pretty sure that was written for the movie Sun Valley Serenade. While I was playing it, I was trying to think of the name of the other movie that Glenn Miller made. Maybe one of you on there in Facebook land can help me out. But I don't think, uh, I don't think it was in the other one. I think it was in Sun Valley Serenade. Anyway, it's appropriate for the holidays. I haven't played that in a while. I was thinking about that. Here in Durango, you can ride the Polar Express. And it, uh, it's one of the popular Christmas activities around here. It's just very, very fun, very celebratory. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Dave, by, by the way, for mentioning the PayPal uh, link. I don't think I've mentioned it yet tonight. I am doing these shows for uh, virtual tips. Oh, oh, Mike, Orchestra Wives. That's the other Glenn Miller movie, but no. Uh, uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo was written for Sun Valley Serenade. In fact, if you watch the original movie and the, the, the scene in the movie where, where that is played by Glenn Miller's orchestra, there's a young trumpet player in the orchestra. I think he was about 18 when the movie was made. He's still living. His name is Ray Anthony. And he became another very big, uh, famous big band leader in the 40s and on into the 50s, actually. They still had some big band music. And so uh, Ray Anthony is probably the last living member of Glenn Miller's orchestra. He autographed a picture for me not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, anyhow, well, we've got a pretty good uh, audience, it looks like, tonight. I appreciate that, folks, on, on uh, Facebook and, and uh, YouTube. And if you're so inclined, please do contribute to the virtual tip jar. I am very, very grateful. There's PayPal and Venmo information both listed. Uh, and I try and, I was discussing this with somebody earlier today, I, I try and, and thank as many people personally as I can, you know, but uh, it is a little difficult. There's so, it's often so many uh, small tips come in that it's, it's hard to do that, and sometimes on PayPal it doesn't even give you the real name of the person, you know, if it's a company name or something, for example, but anyway, I'm very grateful, and uh, Let's let's go ahead and do, while I've got a good crowd going, I'm going to do the most famous Christmas song of all time. Of course, I've already had lots of requests for it. And just last week, actually, I did a Bing Crosby uh, tribute show of sorts. And I was pretty proud of the way that came out. But you know what? I forgot to play White Christmas. And it was Bing Crosby's most successful recording. It was originally written for the movie Holiday Inn by Irving Berlin in 1942, along with a number of other good songs. And the funny thing is that uh, they did not expect it to be a big hit, but when Bing recorded that, something about that song and his voice just went together and it became magical. And I believe, maybe some of you out there on the internet can look it up and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it is still the highest selling record in history of any kind, and that's White Christmas. Uh, something like 100 million copies at this point, if you count digital sales. Uh, you can read about that uh, in the Bing Magazine from, the, from Club Crosby. I was talking about the International Club Crosby last week. So we're gonna do White Christmas. Hey, Mary, that's, uh, I guess you're my cousin down in Texas, and uh, cousins of mine. I said, how I should word it, and uh, she was telling me White Christmas is one of her parents' favorite songs. So we'll do White Christmas, and uh, in fact, here is the original sheet music from the movie Holiday Inn. Now, many people who aren't aware might assume that the song was written for the movie White Christmas, but no. In fact, often what happened in the golden age of Hollywood is that songs that were such an enormous hit would then be used as the title later on for a movie. That was made, oh, more than 10 years, maybe 12 years after the song was written for this film, which starred Bing and, and also Fred Astaire, just about two of my favorite musical performers and movie stars in history. And there was a verse written for the song, which I don't believe uh, Bing actually recorded on his famous record. So I will play the verse for you. I'll even read the lyrics. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, L.A. But it's December the 24th, and I'm longing to be up north. The verses to these songs were very important. 
I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. That's what came next. And so it's often nice to hear how the song is set up. Uh, today, people have forgotten a lot of the old verses to these songs, but I'll play it for you. And along with White Christmas, one of Bing Crosby's other most famous Christmas songs uh, will do I'll Be Home for Christmas, which is from a little bit later in the 40s, I believe. Ah, yeah. Uh, Thomas Finger says, Google tells me White Christmas is the best-selling single of all time. That's what I thought. It probably still is. Thank goodness none of these uh, modern artists who really <laughs> can't sing and only rap have surpassed Bing. Thank goodness. So here's a couple of Bing's famous Christmas songs.
be home for Christmas. There we go, folks. A couple of Bing Crosby's very biggest hits. Thank you, Mary. I'm reading what you're writing there. That's so sweet of you. Oh, my friend, my new friend, Johnny Adams. Greetings from Colorado, my friend. He's watching in England tonight. I can't believe it. It's the middle of the night there, but he's a, he's a night owl like me. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that's so nice of you. Jeanette says the Christmas spirit is flowing from your house to ours. Well, that's what I hope. That's what I hope for. Anyway, uh, you know, uh, also last week, I guess I didn't realize just how many Bing Crosby hits that I know by heart. A lot of the songs that he sang, even ones that weren't hits. But uh, I meant to play Wrap Your Troubles in Dreams, and I didn't get around to it. So let, let me play that for you. It's a beautiful song, not too inappropriate for Christmas time written in 1930 or 31, thereabouts, by Harry Barris, who was one of the Rhythm Boys. And, uh, oh my goodness, Dan, he's watching in Holland. Ah, I can't believe it. I've met tourists from Holland here in, in Colorado, believe it or not, but I've never been there. Maybe I'll get to one of these days. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Ken. Well, let's do Wrap Your Troubles in Dreams. troubles and dreams and dream your troubles away. I've loved that since the first time I heard it about eight or ten years ago. Ken asked about a song called I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus and yes I am planning to play that tonight. Uh, he also mentioned the great ragtime pianist Johnny Maddox who was probably my biggest influence and uh, this song came out in 1952 and in 1953 or thereabouts Actually, it might have been the same year, I'm not sure. Johnny recorded this for Dot Records. Even though he was already working as a musician who was uh, reviving music that had already died to some extent, uh, you know, classic ragtime and so forth, Johnny uh, was around at the time when they still wrote wonderful songs with good melodies like this. And so he, he, he actually had a contemporary record of this when the song came out with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the other side. So I'm going to play both of these songs for you as a medley in honor of Johnny and his record. It wasn't, I don't think it was one of his million sellers, but it was, it was very successful, and there was a full-page ad for Johnny's Christmas record in Billboard magazine in 19, I think it was 1953. 
the boy that sang this song, his name was Jimmy, Jimmy Boyd, and that's him on the cover of the sheet music here. I'm pretty sure this is the first edition of the song, but I'm really not positive because there's also this edition of it, same publisher and the same date, and you, you probably can't see it online, but up here in the tiny corner is the name Roma. That's my mother's name. This was her original copy of this sheet music that she bought when she was taking piano lessons as a little girl. It was probably in the 60s and they were still printing the song. The original sheet music publisher and everything. Um, it's one of only two or three pieces of music, pop sheet music, that were in her possession, you know, from her childhood that I actually kept for my own collection. So I just wanted to show that off. It's kind of special. And... Uh, so here's I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's funny how many of these great Christmas songs were written by Jewish songwriters. Johnny Marks wrote uh, I, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, 1948 or 49, and uh, the, the great cowboy singer Gene Autry, and I'm very fond of Gene Autry. He had the big record on that song. It was the biggest record he ever had, I think. So... Uh, Here's a couple of songs you should know. kissing Santa Claus in, in honor of Johnny Maddox and uh, oh I love these these songs from that time period I I mentioned Johnny Marks who who composed Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and uh, I have a couple of connections with him as well the late Ian Whitcomb my good friend uh, knew Johnny and interviewed him you can see the video interview on on uh, YouTube. I posted it for Ian a while back and uh, just uh, oh, about two weeks ago I sent off a fan letter to a really wonderful vocalist from the 1950s 
Uh, she's one of those people who you, you know the name, you, you recognize her voice maybe, but didn't really realize who she was. At least that was my case until more recent times, and that's Brenda Lee. She, she's very famous for the song Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, which was also written by the old-time Jewish Tin Pan Alley songwriter Johnny Marks. And so I wrote her, wrote her a letter and sent her a picture and a copy of that sheet music. I'm hoping she'll autograph it for me and send it back. She, she was a child star in the 50s, so compared to many of my friends, she's, she's not that old. <laughs> and uh, she lives in Nashville now, but uh, anyway... I, I do see a couple of requests coming through, things that I just don't know, folks, I'm afraid. Uh, it's better for me if I know them by heart before I perform them, like Silver Bells, also Silent Night. Of course, you can rag anything. That's what Johnny used to say, you can rag anything, as long as there's a good melody to it in the first place. Uh, but it's better for me if I already know the song. And I, I do have more things to play for you, more Christmas songs. Yeah, let's do a couple of more Christmas songs. Now, here's one that I have never played very much, and I pulled out the music yesterday, thought I'd do Frosty the Snowman. It's from that same time period, which was really a golden period in American life anyway, which was, which was the 1950s. And uh, so we'll do Frosty the Snowman from 1950, and then also another one of Gene Autry's hits. Uh, like Bing Crosby, Gene Autry was very well known for Christmas songs. These are not like religious hymns, but Christmas popular songs. In, in pop style, and uh, that was Here Comes Santa Claus. So here's Frosty the Snowman, and Here Comes Santa Claus. Let's see.
All right, there's, there's a couple of more of the, the classic Christmas songs, as you might call them. Uh, Dave says that's about three quarters of my own arrangement versus the sheet music. That's true. That's true. Yes. Yes, I saw the birthday request right as I was playing that last song. This is for Craig O'K. You know, I've always felt bad for people who had birthdays so close to Christmas. So let's all sing a happy birthday, 70th birthday, too, for Craig. Here we go. I can't sing, so sing along. Happy birthday to you. That was that was worth it there, my my friends. Um, I saw a request for reindeer rag. Well, I did that right at the beginning of the program, so uh, that I'm so glad that one just occurred to me uh, not that long ago. For the last couple of years, I've been making Christmas cards out of old sheet music covers, and so here's the one that I used this year. My pleasure, Rodney. Um, and it's a pop song, for, again, from the early 1950s, 1953, written in part by Carmen Lombardo, the great band leader, the brother of Guy Lombardo. And I just thought it was really cute. And uh, I'll play it for you now, make a little piano arrangement of it. I've always loved train since I was a kid, too. So the song is called Please Bring My Daddy a Train, Santa. <laughs> and the reason is also very funny. It's a story about little boy who was given a train last year but hasn't been able to play with it yet because his dad has been monopolizing his train set. Please bring my daddy a train Santa, a bright shiny train all his own. You brought me one last Christmas, but Santa don't forget. Christmas was a year ago and I haven't run it yet. I don't want a boat or a plane, Santa. The toys that I have are just fine, but please bring my daddy a train Santa so I can play with mine. sheet music and finding melodies uh, like this that haven't been played in a long time. Please bring my daddy a train, Santa. Well, uh, I might check YouTube here for a minute because I haven't looked to see the requests. 
let's let's see. Yeah. Right in the harem. Well, <clears throat> doesn't look like there's any real serious requests there on uh, YouTube that I've missed. I'm trying to do my best to cover it all. But I'm ready for some more. I have one song that I'm saving for the very end of the broadcast because uh, I, I suppose it's my favorite so far of all the Christmas songs I've heard. And uh, I want to use it as a sort of finale for, for the show tonight. So in the meantime, come up with some more requests for me. I might do some, uh, oh, let's see. Oh, Claudia wants to hear rag apples. Well, that's not a half bad idea. And carbolic acid rag, yep, let me do that too. Uh, in fact, I'll do carbolic acid first. I was thinking, that's funny you asked for that. I was thinking about that earlier today because I hadn't played it in so long. Uh, this was written in Iowa, one of the few, actually, actually there were several great rags that were written in Iowa, but uh, this is the most famous one. Written in 19, uh, 1901. Oh, now the requests are coming in. I guess there's a little bit of a delay in the broadcast. Yeah, I'll try and remember all of those, including Delmar Rag. But here from 1901 is the Carbolic Acid Rag by Clarence Wiley, who was a pharmacist from Oskaloosa, Iowa. <laughs> Acid rag. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Dave, for the request. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, let me do two rags by Charlie Thompson from St. Louis, Missouri. One of my very favorites. He was a friend of Scott Joplin's, and later in his life, he was a good friend of Traber Tishner's, who was a friend of mine. Uh, he played the piano completely by ear and only ever had one published piece of music. I think I'll play it for you now. Uh, I don't know any songs about mistletoe, so like, that's not really a flower either, is it? Because I'm going to do the lily rag. <laughs> I guess it doesn't hurt. So here's the lily rag by Charlie Thompson from 1914, and then we'll do the Delmar rag. James, I'm so surprised you even know that piece or that you would know to ask me for it, for heaven's sakes. Anyway, let's do the lily rag first.
much. That's the Lily Rag Folks by Charlie Thompson. He was known for winning a big contest, a piano contest during the ragtime era in St. Louis against the father of St. Louis ragtime, Tom Turpin. Uh, he won the contest in 1916, and these are the two pieces that he played in the contest, at least two that we know about, and here's the Del Mar Rag as well. Yeah, uh, Bonnie, Lily Rag is very unique. The reason that Charlie Thompson's style was very unique is because he was involved with the classic ragtime fraternity in St. Louis, so to speak, and also the early stride piano players on the East Coast, like James B. Johnson, who was one of his mentors. And uh, the Delmar Rag, supposedly, Trevor Tishner told me that it was named for the Delmar Gardens in St. Louis, which was an early amusement park. And it quotes Mendelssohn's famous spring song. See if you can listen for that in the piece itself. Ah, uh, oh, I see, I see, yeah. It, do, it does sort of quote a very famous classical theme, the spring song. Del Mar Rag, if I can remember it. Thanks, I have not played that in a long time. Uh, probably, oh, probably at least two or three years, maybe. It's funny how it comes back to you. Meadowlark Rag, I played that at the beginning of the broadcast. Funny to get a second request for that. I really love it, it's a beautiful piece of music. Uh, let's go back to the 1920s now, and uh, I don't know, Jerry and Mary Grace, if you're still listening, I know Mary Grace likes this song, so I thought I'd play it. and. It's uh, one of my very favorite ballads from the late uh, 1920s, 1929. It's called Glad Rag Doll. And uh, I play it as a medley uh, with several different songs. Uh, tonight we'll do Tormented, which is a pop song of the mid 30s, Tormented. And it was introduced by Ina Ray Hutton and her all girl orchestra. Oh, great, I'm so glad. Well, then, Mary Grace, you get to hear Glad Rag Doll.
go. Mary Grace, uh, I'm so glad I just happened to think of that. No, I don't know Blue Christmas. Uh, there's a lot of songs I don't know. I saw Bonnie was asking about whether uh, I play by ear, and I really don't. I, I much prefer to have the original sheet music in front of me, and that's just so I get everything as accurate as possible. You know, that's that I try to do as good as I can when I play these songs, and that part of that is getting the chords correct. Yes, I saw the request for rag apples, so we're going to do rag apples. Uh, I did one Iowa ragtime piece. Now, here's another by my very good friend, Marty Mincer, who's one of the two-time champions of the old-time piano contest. And uh, this is my favorite of all of his pieces. It was written about uh, 18 years ago, I believe, so it's a relatively contemporary ragtime piece. Uh, I saw several requests for contemporary rags. I think this is the one I'll do tonight. And uh, while I'm on the subject, I did a whole CD of contemporary ragtime pieces, believe it or not. It's called Revival Ragtime. And even though the CD Baby website is shut down, you can order all of my CDs directly from me. I have about nine in stock, I believe. And a lot of work has gone into each of these over the years. As a consumer of music myself, I still prefer to have real CDs with the cover art and the liner notes. And uh, the, the audio quality is often better than digital downloads, even today. And so if you want to order them, you can't get them on CD Baby. All you have to do is just email me directly. My email's on my website. Uh, most of the CDs are listed on there along with little descriptions of them. And, oh, thank you, James. Thanks for, for supporting the virtual tip jar. There's both PayPal and Venmo links. Uh, if you can do that, I appreciate it, folks. I'm very grateful. And uh, uh, we're talking about my CDs now. In fact, I've filled quite a few orders the last two weeks, and I think it's because people are buying them for Christmas presents. They do make very good stocking stuffers. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I'd love to, to get rid of some more of them, so... Uh, let me do rag apples, everybody.
Yeah, I love it too, Claudia. Rag Apples by Marty Mincer and uh, Professor Bill Edwards. It's called Rag Apples because Marty's an apple farmer in southwest Iowa. Um, no, I'm afraid I don't know Graceful Ghost Rag by Heart. I have had the pleasure of working with William Bolcom twice, though, in, in concert. Um, I think the world of his wife, too, who's a very, uh, very talented uh, vocalist. They do a lot of the old vaudeville-era songs that I really love. Greg asks, what brand is the piano? This is a 1913 Melville Clark piano with an Apollo player piano system in it, which uh, was completely restored uh, up in Denver about four years ago. My friend Jerry DeBaker specializes in these Apollo pianos, and uh, actually the late Dick Kreckel found this for me, and then let, Jerry did some work on it, and a man named Hank Lee is the one that restored it. It has brand new hammers, dampers, and strings, and the whole kit and caboodle. So it's absolutely a magnificent upright. Uh-oh, Bill says YouTube froze, let me check. Well, it looks like it's still going fine here, so I hope so. Yeah, Dave, there's only two pedals on this piano. Uh, you know, the middle pedal, the sostenuto pedal, I think is what it's called, on upright pianos, it only works on about 2% of upright pianos. I don't know why they even put them on upright pianos, because it hardly ever works. It's so bonkers. I don't know. But... Uh... <laughs> Oh, Joseph asked for the Chicago Flyer. You know, I might try and play that for you tonight. Uh, I know I had a request from Marilyn earlier for, uh, for uh, Boogie Woogie Santa Claus, I think, which was a Patty Page hit, but I don't know that. I don't know it by heart. It's a lot, I, I really will have to learn some more Christmas music. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and Dave also mentioned getting the CDs at the next Old Time Piano Contest, but I'm starting to get afraid that... Even by May, we will not be allowed in most states to have, you know, real concert events in the public. I, I'm really concerned about that. And it's also, a lot of the music festivals where I normally play and work, a lot of them are sort of dying off anyway, which is really sad for me. But um, we're, we're having a meeting, some of the board members of the Old Time Piano Contest, to, to determine whether we can do it next year. And it's not really up to the people that run the contest either. It's, it's up to the university, which, you know, it, since the events are held on their campus. So I wouldn't count on that. And it's better if you order the CDs from me anyway. Uh, you know, when I'm home, I can just, just uh, fill the orders at home. But yeah, Bill, Bill Kiefer's saying, no, don't say that. Well, I hope, I hope <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> Lauren asked, is there an email where we can order them from? Yes, Adam Swanson, pianist, P-I-A-N-I-S-T, at gmail.com. It's on my website as well. Let's see. Well, I think I've gotten to most of the requests, and so it may be time to, to play my finale for the evening. No, I'm afraid I don't know Bells of St. Mary's, but uh, oddly enough, I think that was the title of one of Bing Crosby's movies, and I've done a whole bunch of Bing Crosby songs, both on the, la uh, on the last broadcast and the current one. Um, so here's my finale for tonight. We're going to do a whole bunch of music from one of the great Christmas movies. It's one of the great classic films of all time. It's one of the great musicals of all time, and it's also one of the great ragtime era movies of all time. And I'm talking about Meet Me in St. Louis. I've had the pleasure of shaking Margaret O'Brien's hand out at the Cinecon Film Festival in Hollywood, oh, about five or six years ago. Uh, she's still with us. She's in her 80s. I don't know how she's doing. And, of course, she starred in that movie uh, with Judy Garland. And it's one of my favorites of Judy Garland's movies as well. And uh, like I said, the whole thing's set in the ragtime era, which is wonderful. It's also a Christmas movie. Virginia, yay! Yeah, there's a, there's a lady who grew up in St. Louis and knows it well. It's, it's set around, actually, the St. Louis World's Fair of 1904, the Louisiana Purchase Exposition. And so I'm going to play two songs that were originally from the ragtime era, Meet Me in St. Louis and Under the Bamboo Tree.
And then I'll play three of the songs written for the movie by the wonderful songwriter Hugh Martin, who did a lot of work for MGM Studios. And uh, this, the first uh, song is a waltz called The Boy Next Door, which Judy Garland sang to Tom Drake. I, I just love this movie. The old Victorian homes in the movie. Uh, you can get it on Blu-ray now, folks, and, and uh, it's well worth seeing it, especially uh, on Blu-ray, because it's as if you're in the movie theater, you know, back in 1944 when it came out. Oh, it's so great to, to see you too, Virginia. Sure have missed you this year. Uh, Virginia is the daughter of Trevor Tishner, who's the most prominent and famous ragtime pianist and historian from St. Louis. And, of course, there's also the trolley song, which uh, Judy Garland sang in this movie, and I absolutely uh, love the trolley song. It uh, makes a sort of great uh, hot piano solo, almost like stride piano. And then uh, also, and maybe, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people realize this, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas was written for that movie specifically by Hugh Martin. And uh, Judy Garland only sang one chorus of it, I think, sitting in a window in a scene with Margaret O'Brien. And uh, it was pretty neat to meet her after seeing that on the big screen at the Egyptian Theater at the Senecon Classic Film Festival. But anyhow, here is my whole medley, or, or little fantasy if you want to call it that, on music from the movie Meet Me in St. Louis.
everybody. That's music from Meet Me in St. Louis. I really do love that film and all of the music in it. It's not all of the songs, but almost all of them. And, uh, you know, while I was playing that, I just remembered that I had a request for some boogie-woogie piano, and I haven't done that yet tonight. So, why don't I leave you all with one more number? Uh, I'll just do my version of the classic Pine Tops Boogie Woogie, and that'll put everybody in a... Uh, <laughs> happy, excited mood for Christmas. So here's uh, Pine Top's Boogie Woogie. Tops Boogie Woogie. Well, with that, uh, I'm going to sign off for the Ragtime Christmas show tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Great to have a, looks like one of my biggest audiences here on Facebook and YouTube uh, yet. And so, boy, these, these shows, even though they're not real, they are fun. Maybe just fun in a different way. And I'm grateful to all of you that uh, can contribute to the tip jar and and tell anybody that you think might be interested in this kind of music to tune in. I'm doing every Sunday night, although I think I will be skipping next Sunday night simply because it's awfully close to Christmas and uh, my family's going to come here to Durango to visit. So I think I'm going to take next week off. It's the holidays and uh, do then another virtual show two weeks from tonight on a Sunday night, which would actually be into early January of next year. I'm sure ready for next year, <laughs> and I bet I'm not the only one. So thanks again, folks. Hope you had as much fun as I did, and I'll talk to you in two weeks, two weeks from tonight.